This is a quick primer on dopamine. Dopamine is a common vasopressor used in critically ill patients. It is unique among pressors because it has different effects depending on the dose range administered. That's because it has effects in at least three different types of receptors in the body. D1 or dopamine 1 receptors, beta 1 adrenergic receptors, and alpha adrenergic receptors. At low doses of 1 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute, dopamine acts primarily on D1 or dopamine 1 receptors in the renal, mesenteric, cerebral, and coronary beds, resulting in selective vasodilation. Moving on up, at intermediate doses of 5 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute, dopamine also acts on beta-1 receptors. Recall that beta-1 receptors are found primarily in the heart, and stimulating them increases heart rate and stroke volume. In other words, at these intermediate doses, dopamine has a positive chronotropic and inotropic effect. Chronotropic meaning increasing heart rate, and inotropic meaning increasing contractility, i.e. stroke volume. What about at high doses? At doses of greater than 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute, the predominant effect of dopamine is to stimulate alpha receptors. Recall that when alpha receptors are stimulated, they produce vasoconstriction, increasing systemic vascular resistance, or SVR. So this means that at higher doses, dopamine acts a bit more like a pure presser, like a phenylephrine, for instance. However, the vasoconstrictive effect of dopamine is weaker than that of some other common agents. So to recap, dopamine has different effects depending on what dose you administer. Low doses, 1 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute, that's D1 receptors in the kidney, gut, brain, and heart. Vasodilation in these organs. These low doses are also referred to as renal doses of dopamine. Intermediate doses, 5 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. That's beta-1 receptors in the heart, chronotropy, inotropy, faster heart rate, contractility, increased stroke volume. And finally, high doses, greater than 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Now we're in alpha receptor territory, basal constriction everywhere, SVR increases. Great, so now we understand dopamine from a mechanistic or more basic science perspective. But let's be real, in the clinical setting, how do we actually use dopamine? What do we use it for? Well, a common indication for dopamine would be hypotension secondary to heart failure, like a cardiogenic shock type of picture, for instance. You can imagine that dopamine's beta effects, as well as its coronary vasodilation effects, would be useful to fight this type of pathology. Typically, though, UpToDate actually recommends starting dopamine at a low dose of 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and then titrating it up to physiologic effect, rather than relying on the predicted dose ranges we just described. Usually, the appropriate dose will be somewhere in between 2 and 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute, although doses as high as 130 micrograms per kilogram per minute have been employed. So remember to continually reassess your patient and reevaluate the need for dopamine and other vasopressors.